sixth case without comments. So, here we can see the pseudo capsule. Ventral to the thyroid, this is the strap muscle, but this is either uh, belongs to the strap muscle or the thyroid, but here the capsule is clearly discontinuous and also here. So one of the signs uh, of a possible extratidal extension is clearly present. The nodule is in close proximity of the ventral wall of the thyroid lobe, so it is abutting, it has abutting contours and also uh, produces bulging. So all three possible signs of an extratidal extension are present in this nodule. Here it is more uh, uh, obvious, capsule of the thyroid, here maybe this can correspond to the capsule, but in the ventral part of the lobe, ventral part of the nodule, where it is adjacent to the thyroid, no signs of capsule are present. In great proportion, great part of the nodule, it is uh, in the close proximity of the ventral wall of the thyroid and some bulging. Here is the ventral part of the uh, thyroid lobe and here is uh, the ventral part of the nodule. And it, uh, it caused another um, problem. Uh, the echogenicity of the muscle fiber is identical to that part of the lobe. So the similar echo structures of the strap muscle and the deeply hyper part of the nodule can cause concern. Uh, this patient was uh, two or three times uh, on uh, aspiration cytology and in all cases cytology disclosed colloid uh, goiter and uh, the, this nodule did not show any increase in size. So this is not a histologically verified case but uh, more times uh, the cytology was uh, clearly benign. And one more consideration uh, vessels are running on the periphery of the nodule but uh, it is very difficult in this case uh, to judge this uh, pattern as uh, perinodular. I cannot exclude the possibility but uh, in contrast with the former case uh, this uh, vascular pattern uh, corresponds to type 3 dominantly intranodular vascularity. And one more consideration. In the event of a peripheral vascularity, we cannot see such vessels uh, uh, initiating from the capsule. The capsule uh, does not produce such uh, vessels into the nodule. Uh, this is not an absolute proof, but uh, uh, it stands against uh, a perinodular blood flow. So, comments, questions regarding this case? How was the TSH? What was the TSH? Uh, this was a euthyroid patient. Mm -hmm. It looks like a toxic adenoma. Yes, uh, I think uh, Gilles uh, thought also to this because such an extreme intranodular vascularity uh, is quite specific of an autonomously functioning adenoma. Uh, I did not uh, perform scintigraphy in a patient uh, who is euthyroid, but uh, it is conceivable that this can be a euthyroid state of a toxic adenoma. I cannot exclude this possibility and uh, this pattern uh, raises uh, this possibility clearly. But I follow uh, the suggestions uh, since 2006 and I perform scintigraphy only in toxic 
patients uh, with thyroid nodules. I ask a question regarding Please. this case. Uh, would you perform a second uh, biopsy in the follow-up period? Yes, uh, I performed. Uh, yeah, I performed two or three times, but I oh. uh, finished with this uh, aspiration cytology because uh, three times negative aspiration uh, cytology must be enough, even in a suspicious nodule. I would yes. perform a repeat aspiration if the nodule would increase in size. Uh, but I think that uh, uh, in a suspicious module, I regularly repeat the cytology at least once more, but not uh, more than three times. The exception uh, if the patient uh, uh, asks me, because uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, we can calm down with the negative, uh, repeated negative cytology, but uh, following the guidelines, we should not perform. Uh, more than two or more than three times aspiration cytology, except for uh, growing modules. Yes, thank you.